I recently put up a poll asking you guys what you felt like you struggled with the most learning piano. And most of you gave the answer of fitting both parts in each hand together. Don't worry, everyone who's ever learnt piano has felt your pain at some point or another. And um, you get that feeling where it just doesn't make sense or your hands won't do what you want them to. But here I've got for you four practical, effective, tried and tested, practice methods and tactics with examples to, to help you get going, learn how to play two hands at the same time or to help you in situations when you're stuck. I'm gonna put timestamps in the description for each section. The first few are kind of um, some groundwork you may need to lay before actually trying to put your hands together. And then the fourth step is really the most crucial bit where I want you to follow along with a couple of uh, different examples. Um, and I'm gonna talk about my thinking along the way, how I'm gonna break this up, how I'm gonna approach it, and how I'm gonna build it up step by step um, with manageable chunks, so eventually I can learn to play it hands together, get it flowing comfortably. Depending on what you're learning, maybe some of these might work better than others, or a combination of approaches, maybe trying different things out going back and forth. Sometimes, not all the time, but more often when you don't have too much experience of playing many things hands together yet, we need to make sure that we've actually got each hand separately working on its own first. Just to be clear, this doesn't always apply to everything, and sometimes it's better to try and go in straight away hands together. I'll come back to that in a minute. There's two main reasons to focus on each hand apart. The first one is just so you can get a clear sense in your head of what's actually happening in each hand. Without too much experience, it can be overwhelming and ineffective to try and learn two things at the same time. We need to memorize what it actually is we're playing, learn what the notes are, what the chord sequence is, or the melody, the pattern, whatever it may be, and of course, the rhythm as well. This usually works best in small chunks at a time, gradually building up, I don't mean the whole piece in one go. And doing that hands apart can just give you that kind of mental clarity of what's going on. If you're still hesitating over what notes to play, then that's gonna be really difficult when you're trying to do that with both hands. And the other really important thing is so that we can sort out any technical issues. By that, I mean things like making sure that we have a good fingering routine rehearsed and that you're repeating the same fingers each time. That's important when you're beginning and that your hand placement is working for you, not against you, and so that you have some nice relaxed movement and that you're in control of what you're playing. There's still room for improvement and refinement to tweak things, tweak the performance, articulation, and things like that later on when we put hands together, but we've kind of just got to get it at least functional first. Again, it can be overwhelming to do this both hands together when you're new to playing. A common issue is trying to do too much at once, so we have to have an adaptable approach to learning though, and maybe for some things you won't need to do that or only need to gloss over it quickly. And I'll give you a couple of scenarios when you actually might not want to do this. The first is when you're purposefully trying to challenge yourself to learn quicker and take on more information at once, learn two things at the same time. That's actually an important thing to start trying to do at some point. I just think that's usually best when you have some experience of coordinating your hands together under your belt anyway, or it just gets too much and you just end up getting stuck. The other is that sometimes certain things, certain kinds of ways of playing, actually lend themselves to being learned hands together and are easier to do it that way. You have to judge each scenario by itself. Let's say I was trying to learn this chord pattern. But in that particular case, if you learn that hands together, those left hand thumb points are gonna make sense as fitting around the right hand. It's kind of flowing back and forth between the hands. It's actually easier to learn that way. The next tip, with more experience, you'll be able to do this quicker and quicker without having to think as hard as you develop a good sense of rhythm until you come across new challenges, of course. We need to make sure we actually understand intellectually how things fit together, where the notes line up, where the hands meet, where they don't. It's helpful to have some slow, out of time run throughs of a section with pauses. To start with, when the focus is on learning where the hands meet up and when it's just right hand, when it's just left hand. And even with more complicated patterns, we can always make this more straightforward when we build it up bit by bit using little small chunks at a time. I'll get to that a bit more later on. It's gonna be a big issue holding you back when you try and play everything hands together properly and cause you to hesitate and tense up if you're still unsure where things should go. If you're reading music, with a lot of stuff particularly early on, you can often see what lines up and we can use that to your advantage. We're gonna use the beginning of Minuet and G as an example and you can see here how we start off with our hands together on beat one because they line up here 
and then we've got a couple of right hand notes on their own, on beat two and the end of two. They meet up again on beat three, and then it's the right hand on its own. They meet up again here on beat one of the next bar, and then we've got a couple more right hand notes on their own. So if I play that, that's hands together, and two right hand notes climbing up, and then it's gonna be hands together again, and then it's gonna be right hand, and then hands together again, and then two right hand notes. Performing that well with good timing and everything is the next step, obviously, but we've got to have a good sense of where things fit together first. So even if you have a run through out of time, just to get the connections, that might be a helpful thing to do to start with sometimes. And as well as just feeling where that beat is, it's also really helpful to count. And that gives you like an even grid to work against. Up to a point when things start to get too fast, um, a really helpful thing to do is to count using the smallest divisions. In this case, the smallest uh, division is eighth notes or quavers. Then we can definitively pick out the exact moments on that even grid of one and two and three and, and, and label those exact points where hands meet together or where the right hand goes on its own. Just quickly, if this video has been helpful so far, then please click the like button because that's really helpful for the channel and to get these videos shown to more people. And let me know in the comments if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with anyone else that you think might help. And also what songs or pieces or exercises have you got stuck on or found really difficult to get your hands working together? It could be really helpful sometimes too as a precursor to properly playing something and think about what every finger on each hand is doing and to get all the right movement together is to kind of sketch it out first just by tapping out the rhythm and the pattern between the hands. This is probably better suited to more rhythmic patterns like if you're playing chord rhythms and stuff. It might not work for everything but it's helpful sometimes um, and it gives you a chance to solely concentrate on how the hands fit together and get that working before having to worry about which notes to put your fingers on along the way at the same time. And you can kind of superimpose that over the top afterwards. So if I was to try and learn this. I can just take bit by bit and just think about what my hands are doing before thinking about the exact notes. The first bit goes together, left, right, and then it moves here and goes together. But we can practice getting that flowing um, just clapping on our knees. Together, left, right, together. And when you feel that as one kind of flowing movement, together, left, right, together. When that's comfortable, then you can kind of apply it to the positions on the piano. But now you've got something else to consider is that your left hand's gonna move down a bit. So we've got one other kind of movement going on. But the hands gives you that kind of framework to work off. So slowly, together, left, right. Now you just have to remember with the last together, you're gonna move down a bit as well. Together, left, right, together. And then you practice that till you can incorporate that kind of position change and downward movement as well. So the next little chunk went together, left, together, left. So we can practice that tapping again, together, left, together, left until our hands are kind of flowing nicely and it feels like one constant movement and then we just apply that to the core positions together left and now we have to move down as well so together left down together left those first three steps are things that you may or may not need to do first. The next step is really the most important thing you need to do in terms of really getting something together and building up towards getting it flowing. I've been kind of mentioning this throughout, but when you're stuck fitting two parts together, we need to build up to it bit by bit with manageable chunks. And I'm gonna show you how to do that with a couple of examples. Over on Patreon, I'm gonna do a kind of extension to this video with a few more examples to really help you get a good sense of these practice methods. And you can unlock that on any tier. There's a link for that below in the description if you wanna check it out and see if that's something you might wanna sign up for. The thing that often stops people from getting stuff hands together is that they're either trying to do it too fast or they're trying to do too much in one go. So you just end up overloading your brain trying to process too much information or trying to process it too quickly. It just kind of screws up what you're doing and makes you feel like you can't do it. When we do it bit by bit, you realize each little chunk is quite simple. Then it's just a case of doing one simple thing followed by another simple thing, then another simple thing. And we can repeat the process with a couple of passes. Maybe the first pass is just working on 
getting it together, getting your hands moving through the thing. And then the second pass would be more on working, getting it flowing, getting it a bit faster. So I'm just gonna use the first few bars of Minuet and G again as an example. This is what we're aiming for. Just for simplicity, I'm gonna do it without the ornament in there. So this is how I always work on things with my students and work on things myself as well. We need to find logical break points to work on. So the first bit is quite straightforward. We're just gonna play the chord and then the first melody note in the right hand. And then we could practice flowing up, adding that bit on in just our right hand. So if you can already do that bit in your right hand, which you should have worked on already, then you're just holding a chord down at the same time. So when you just do that, it doesn't seem so bad. We also previously thought about where the left hand meets the right hand. Now I've cut it off at the point where the right hand meets on that B, there. So now we're just adding one more thing on. At the point we hit that B, we're gonna move from the chord to that note A. Now if that actual movement is tough by itself technically, remember that's something we want to work on independently before bringing the hands together. That's literally just putting one more note on with this. Nice, go slower than that if you need. Then this is a really important part, don't keep moving on to the next step until you really feel like you've got the bit that you're currently working on under control. So when that feels good, like you can get that right pretty much every time, then we just stitch on a little bit more. So now let's complete the right hand part up to the D. Up to that point. So we're just gonna leave the left hand for the moment, we can add it in in a sec. Now you can practice your right hand carrying on after you've moved that left hand note. Okay, so when that feels good, then we need to join the next left hand note with that note we ended up on in the right hand. And the left hand note is just gonna move up a second. Remember, a second is just kind of next door in the scale. So now we're gonna try and get to that point with this D at the top. And then in this piece, once you can do that, the next bit is just two right hand notes on its own. So once you can get to there, then just try adding on those two Gs with your thumb. You can start thinking about it, but I wouldn't worry too much about the performance and the articulation at the moment. We can refine that after we've got the basic mechanics functional. And remember, as you're doing this, be conscious of your technique, where you're holding your hand, make sure your hand's not dipping, you know, all the basic technique stuff, because you don't. what you don't wanna do is, you don't wanna accidentally develop a habit of doing this one way and building up the muscle memory of your hand in a weird place or something like that. It may feel slower to rehearse something like that, but in the long run, it's actually much quicker and, and more efficient overall. The next logical break point might just be landing on the first beat of the next bit and then stitching that note on. So you're just now um, practicing landing on the starting point of the next little phrase. Now what you could do is you could almost think about starting again from that point, getting that little chunk together and then stitching that chunk onto the first chunk. So from here, if you can already play this phrase in your right hand, well, now you're just holding that note with the first one the whole time. So if you take, if you just take that one moment, that's a manageable chunk to learn. And if you can do that, then you've just got to think to yourself, okay, that's when the left hand moves down a second on that top note. So I'm, I'm matching the left hand note with the start of this phrase and the end of this phrase. So here, and then at this point, your hands are gonna move outwards, aren't they? This one's going down, that one's going up. So think of it as um, one movement outwards. Out, like that. And then if you can do that, then it's just adding those two Gs on at the end. So when you've got this chunk together, and you've got the first chunk together, well then, it's just about a little bit of stamina, I guess, mental stamina, um, piecing those two bits together. 
and then perhaps they're just a the few bars you work on to start with and you get them all coordinated together, you get that flowing and then perhaps you could start working on the next piece of the music. For the second pass, when we're working on getting it flowing, I mean you can do more than two, you can gradually build up the speed as well. You could just do those same chunks again, and but just play them faster. And then work on getting this note in. And then getting up to that D, perhaps just adding the left, left hand in straight away now, you're kind of used to it. Although that, if that is harder, just break it down to as, as smaller chunks as you need. Then add that on, and then just repeat the same thing for the other section. So use the same kind of logical break points in the piece and, and work on them now, really getting them flowing. Remember to keep maintaining all your um, good technique and everything that you've practiced. And the real tip with stuff like this is that when you're practicing it, this is just a general practice tip anyway, don't leave it forever until you come back to it and practice it again. Because when you're trying to build up that muscle memory and that flow, it needs to feel fresh in your mind. If you spend a, like an hour practicing that and then leave it a week or two, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be back at square one, but it's gonna feel hard again and it's demotivating as well. Keep coming back to it little and often to try and build that habit. An important thing to bear in mind when you are trying to get things flowing is to, although we've been analyzing it up to this point, is now you're kind of familiar with it and you've got it functional, is to not overthink it. And in fact, like trust in your muscle memory of it. Try and keep everything relaxed. If you overthink things too much, then that might cause you to tense up when you're trying to get things flowing and play a little bit quicker. And then think about a larger group of um, notes. It's just like one shape that you're just moving through. I wanna give you one more example. Now this might be harder to play. Um, remember, you don't actually have to play this. I just want you to learn the concept of how you might go about fitting something together and building up to playing it. So this is just kind of like a basic blues shuffle pan. So let's pretend you can do each hand um, separately to a reasonable standard at the moment and now you're trying to start fitting those hands together but it's really hard to coordinate those two things and I know that because I've been there with this kind of stuff and I still am there when I learn something that's a new challenge for me but this process is what helps you develop and learn more new things. The chunks I would use for this are perhaps just practicing first that so I'm thinking okay that's a lead in and then the first left hand hit matches up with that. If you just do that one little bit on its own, that's not so bad to get. Then we think logically about what fits together next, um, and then your right hand does a thumb note whilst your left hand hits the same position. So your left hand goes up and down twice and then your thumb bounces. So that's just one little extra motion, that thumb bounces and that goes up and down. And then the right hand jumps up here, and the left hand keeps the bottom note but moves the thumb up to there. So that's quite handy because both our hands, well just our thumb in this hand and the top part of this hand is going to be moving in that direction. So we think about that as one movement that's going to help us kind of like sketch the movement. So we move up. And then when you can do that comfortably, practice that a bunch of times until that feels confident. Add on one more beat here. The left hand going up and down in the same position again, the right hand coming to these black keys here. So this you've got to lift up and over whilst your left hand goes up and down. So it's kind of an up and down motion in both hands, but the right hand is going to go forward a bit to reach the black keys, like that. And again, if you do that one thing by itself, it's going to sound weird on its own, but one movement like that isn't so bad. So that's why you get the other bit confident first, then you're just adding one more new thing on. And then you practice getting back to the beginning spot. And then that pattern happens to just repeat. So when you've got that solid getting back to the beginning spot, here's what I do. I would just try and, because it's repetitive, I would just try and practice one and get one really good with good technique, good timing and everything first. Okay, and then pause and have a break. Make sure that you're not feeling tense because sometimes a big part of what can um, build up tension is obviously bad technique. But actually another part of it is psychological. When you're overthinking, it kind of forces you to tense up. And when, you're, when you have to think less, I think it's easier to relax everything. So just do one to start with and get that good. And then gradually build up. See if you can do two in a row and then three in a row. And eventually when you've got it feeling so easy, it's just something you could repeat. And one extra tip when you're trying to put your hands together, 
try and hear, try and listen to the composite rhythm. By that I mean the sound of the overall rhythm when everything's put together, not two individual parts. With enough experience you want to start listening to two separate parts at the same time depending on what you're doing, but it's really useful to hear everything as kind of one sound that you just happen to be playing between two hands. I hope that was helpful, remember to hit the like button or let me know in the comments if it was as that's really helpful for the channel. Subscribe for more content to help you learn better and click the notification bell too so YouTube actually tells you when there's a new video out. I have a video here you can check out next with 101 tips for learning piano, a complete range of different sorts of things. Thanks for watching.